Hey, it's Ben here, and here in this tutorial, we're going to have a look at how we composite on these different types of light leaks, how we change the color of them, how we composite them on for different transitions, and also then for just kind of different lighting effects in Final Cut Pro 10. So we're going to be using some clips, and all the clips you can kind of see here are from a website called Soundstripe. And I've also created some of my own light leaks, which is super easy to do. I'll leave a link to a video on how to do that below in the description. Um, but let's dive in and have a look at how we create some of these light leak transitions and also these kind of distortion transitions using overlays in Final Cut Pro 10. So we're gonna jump into a brand new timeline here. And here in this timeline, we have a few different clips uh, of the city, this gentleman jogging, um, and then also some kind of cutaways to you know, different parts of the city as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is kind of focus on one of the transitions using one of the, the piece of footage from Soundstripe. So essentially in here we have a couple of different distortions uh, from screens. So here you can see the RGB that you would kind of see if you zoom right in on your TV screen or something like that. Uh, and then we've got some kind of TV static noise as well. And we'll use these to kind of create some initial transitions. So we'll grab the TV static screen first of all and just drop it down to the timeline. And what we're looking for in here is if we scroll through, you can see we've got this kind of flick of the channel there. And that's the bit of the video footage that we're looking for to actually create our transition with. So I'm just gonna trim my clip down to this shorter section. We'll just make sure we've got that transition in there and we can shorten it down a little bit more. And then we're gonna overlay it over this first transition. So essentially what we're gonna do is briefly fade this in And we're gonna use that little jump, that little kind of change the channel or change the tuning um, to be our transition essentially. So we're gonna, first of all, just look at how we can use some of the blend modes to actually composite this onto our layers. So if we come up to our inspector at the top right, if you don't see the inspector, just go to window, show in workspace and make sure your inspector is checked on. We'll be using this throughout this tutorial. And we're gonna use these compositing options. So there's kind of three tabs here for my video. There's no audio track to this one. So we're looking for the film strip here and the blend mode just below that. So we'll position our playhead just over the middle somewhere of our transition. And essentially we're gonna use either the screen or the lighten blend mode here, which is gonna remove all the, the black from that image and kind of blend it with the layer below. So you can see we end up seeing some of that drone footage in the background for this incoming clip. And then as we move to the next clip, we're gonna be kind of blending it together with that runner as well. And you'll see little flashes of that as we transition. And then in order to kind of get this transition to work, if we play this through now, you'll see it kind of jumps in a little bit quickly at the beginning and end. So I'm simply gonna add a dissolve transition um, onto this. So if I hold down Command and tap the T key, it's gonna add my default dissolve transition. I'll just shorten these up a little bit. And so essentially, we're gonna have quite a short transition. And if we play this through now, you can see we just kind of use that distortion to move from one clip to the next. So a little bit of smoke and mirrors to kind of catch people's eye as we move from the clip to hide the, the cut between those two clips. Now, if we wanna soften the cut up a little more, we can select the edit point down here. And we'll also do Command T and add a cross dissolve. And that's just gonna also add a dissolve between those two clips as well. So with the flashing of the distortion, the untrained eye won't really even notice there's a transition there. It's just gonna be kind of that blast of color that people pick up on. So that's one nice option for transition. We'll now have a look at this second clip. We'll just drag that down to the timeline as well. And you can see here, as we kind of scrub through, we've got some different kind of movements in this screen. And if we just do Shift and Z, we'll see the whole timeline here. And you can see as we kind of scrub through this clip, we've got some different movements and different flashes of color uh, and different kind of zoom levels um, of these uh, colors moving around on screen. So if we just find a spot where we're getting a little bit of change in that transition, so we've got this kind of nice flash from the red, green, and blue squares to this horizontal squares, so we'll, we'll use this. So I'm just gonna trim down to this section. And again, basically the same idea, we're gonna put this on the next edit point, and then we will select that, and just position the playhead over that first clip. We'll use, again, either the, the lighten or screen mode um, to kind of let that image in the background shine through. So you can see we get this nice kind of section of the lights moving in there. So if we, again, uh, select this clip, hold down Command and tap T, then we can add that transition there, and that is gonna transition nicely through that edit point. Now you can see the, 
the actual kind of flashes of the color were a little bit away from my edit point. So I'm going to come to my trim tool and I'm just going to move this back a little bit so we get a bit of that flashing actually right on that edit point. So you can see it works quite nicely, that little flash of the color transitions quite nicely from one clip to another. Now in the background clip here as well, um, we could use a different transition rather than the cross dissolve. So we will come down and use a push transition here. Just drop that on there. And we are gonna have to shorten these clips up a little bit. So we'll just nudge this back a little bit. And basically, we're gonna have a nice kind of quick push of those two clips and then that overlaid kind of light effect um, above there. And I'm gonna get my push to kind of move in the same direction as some of that movement in the video above. So you always wanna work with your clips to make sure that any movement, any transitions is kind of using what's in each of those clips. And that's looking quite nice. We could speed these up or slow these down a little bit, but essentially um, what we've got there is, is looking pretty good. So let's jump in to the light leaks uh, that I created. So a light leak can be created in a few different ways, but essentially what I've done here is I've put a black backdrop up and then um, shine the light around my camera and also got it to reflect through some things. So through some liquid and um, through some different objects. So you get that kind of distorted light feeling. And as I said, I'll leave a link below to a video on how to actually make these. So you can see here, um, in here, we've got these kind of flashes of color and some of them are more distinguished than others, um, which we can then overlay over the top of our transitions. Now this number nine is quite nice. So I'm gonna use this on the last clip. And actually I slowed these right down. So I shot them 120 frames per second um, so that I could let them run over a much longer period of time. So you can see here we've got the lights kind of moving quite slowly. But actually I'm gonna hold down Command and tap R and just retime this so it's really super quick. So we'll just do Shift and Z to zoom to fit now and then we'll zoom in just a little bit. So basically here now, it's gonna kind of flash really quickly from all that movement in front of the camera and we can just use that as our light leak overlay. So you can see we've got these nice flashes and we'll use the same technique. So we're gonna go to screen and that is gonna overlay it over the top of the video in the background. So we'll get this little flashes of light uh, across our video. And again, I'll add that transition in there to just kind of soften it a little bit around the edges um, as we kind of move through that transition. So you can see the lights just become a distortion as the two clips move. And if we add a transition behind there as well, we'll get a slight softening again of that transition. So you can see the light leaks work really nice. So if we select our light leak now, you can see we've got this kind of blue light uh, flashing and moving across. And we can actually come into our color options. I'm gonna to come to my effects here across on the right. We are gonna come down to color and we're gonna select this colorize option. Just drop it uh, onto the clip there. And you can see basically we're remapping with that color effect our black to red. Um, and actually I'm gonna change this to a map to black and then I'll white this kind of lighter red. So we can select a different color here and you can see that's gonna change the, the color of that light leak. So we can pick out something like a magenta and we can also increase the intensity of that as well. So we get more of that color um, in there too. So this colorize effect is really useful when you wanna adapt those light leaks over the top of some different bits of footage. Now with the light leaks, we can stack them as well. So if I take this second light leak, I'm gonna drop that there, and I'm gonna retime it using this button this time. We're gonna speed it up to 20 times, and maybe even more. And I'm just gonna basically get it to slot right into this area here, and I'm gonna reverse it too, so that the movement is across in a different direction. So with that set up, I'm gonna change my option to screen here, which is gonna blend it with the background. And you can see now we've got a kind of two lights kind of moving in different directions, which is just gonna to add to that uh, effect, that kind of distortion effect as we transition between those two clips. And we'll add a color rise on here as well. So let's just move to where we can see this one. And I'm gonna 
again change this to black and we are going to change our white we went for magenta last time so let's go for a nice rich yellow and we'll increase the intensity of that so you can see we've got those lights kind of moving in the opposite direction as we transition between those clips a nice effect we can also obviously select these and then hold down the option key and duplicate those um, perhaps change the color or the speed or change the direction of them so that it's not the same on every single transition but they're real nice effects to just play around with to see what works uh, to find out what kind of style you want to include in your video and it's a super easy video effect to make yourself so the light leaks are really nice and easy to make uh, and then also these kind of distortion effects um, can work really nicely too. So one other thing we can do with our light leaks, I'm just going to do shift and Z again, is actually get it to run across the whole video. So as I mentioned, these light leaks that we've got here are quite nice and long. So I'm going to just have a look at what we've got here and we'll pick out one of them. Let's grab this light leak number seven and I'm going to drop this over all my videos. We'll trim this down from the beginning, stretch that out and just get that to the right length. And then we're gonna do the same thing with this. So now we can come to screen. And you can see we've kind of got this haziness in the, the kind of light here. So actually there's nothing in this light leak that is pure black. So if I hold down command and tap seven, it's gonna show me my waveforms here. And you can see if I just turn off the screen option here, then basically we don't have a lot of contrast in some areas of this light leak. So one thing we could do here is come to the color correction for the, the light leak and just modify the exposure. So I'm going to kind of pull my mid-tones and blacks down a little bit, just looking at my waveform here, and then I'm going to lift up my whites. So we just get a little bit of contrast around the edges here and um, where the image is going to be 100% visible. So if I come back here, We'll come to screen. So as you can see, when we play this through, we've just got this real subtle kind of changing of the light when we're on our videos. We've got these nice different effects overlaying that video. Now, obviously with this too, um, we can use the colorize option. So this is gonna allow us to kind of add that uh, different color to different parts of our video. So we can kind of change uh, what is what the blacks will be so we could have a kind of magenta hue to everything by using screen and you can see we can just use the color picker to find exactly what we're looking for and then for this one we can again we'll pick out maybe this kind of richer orange or yellow again and then we'll increase the intensity and actually if we increase the intensity i'm just gonna change this to a slightly darker color so we don't completely blow that out. Just go for a blue and a yellow. So if we play this through, you can see at the beginning, we've just got this slight blue tinge um, to our video. And then as we keep moving through, um, we kind of get these kind of brighter distortions uh, in our video. So some of this strange kind of yellow light uh, moving across the image. So it's quite nice in terms of being able to add those detailed um, effects to things, to add a little bit of a unique lens distortion light effect um, to your videos. So have a play around with these. I'll leave download links to my light leaks. You can grab those for, for free. And if you're thinking about purchasing a subscription-based stock video package, then Soundstripe's definitely worth checking out. So you can see in my original example, basically all we've done is uh, kind of had a couple of extra, extra layers in there. I've also tried to match um, some of the light effects a little bit better with different parts of the footage. Um, as I've gone through and then also these multiple layers of the the light leaks over different parts of the video as well and you can really kind of stack these up uh, the rendering will get a little bit fun the more stacking you do but that's pretty cool and then I've also downloaded some audio tracks from Soundstripe as well to kind of add that extra bit of flavor to this little edit now one interesting thing about the audio tracks and we'll just jump onto Soundstripe here is that you can download them um, as these uh, stems which basically downloads the audio track but downloads all the different parts of that track so if we come to the downloads folder here and just double click into this you can see essentially what we have here is we have the the drums the keys the percussion the strings and all those bits of audio as different tracks um, and the same for the track I'm using currently in my edit 
uh, this kind of ghost beats track we've got the bass the drums the keys and the percussion all separate which means we can mix those different tracks separately so we can kind of lift up and down different parts of the audio um, which allows you to create a bit more texture as you work on your edits definitely a nice feature of some of the audio tracks you can download from Soundstripe. If you have any questions about these compositing techniques, then leave a comment below. If you have any other questions about Final Cut Pro 10, about some of the techniques that I've been using in these videos, then do get in touch or drop a comment, and I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.